I have everything Zoom took. I'm finally free. I'm home. This isn't your home, Barry. This is a mirage. A fiction that will end us both unless you let me the hell out of this thing! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And today I've got good news. If you're like me and you thought Heroes in Crisis was a full-on character assassination of Wally West and everything that made that character the symbol of hope in DC Rebirth, it turns out Josh Williamson might agree with you because it appears in the pages of Flash 761 that came out today. He's, uh, he's retconned that a little bit. And here to talk with me about that is the comic scholar himself. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. I'm really happy after I read this comic. I have a smile ear to ear. Me too. I, I'd actually dropped off the Flash comic after, when I think when it was in Flash Quest. I did not like that story arc. I was going to jump back in on Flash Age, but I thought the, the Flash Age story in 750 wasn't all that good. I was like, ah, maybe Flash isn't all that great. But I heard that something might have happened in this issue. I jumped in there, and oh my goodness. We're going to talk about the comic afterwards, but let's get to the main event right now. But before we get to those details, I do want to say, if you're enjoying the content on Thinking Critical or you love comic books but you haven't subscribed to the channel, now is the time to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us an enormous thumbs up if you like this content. Give us a big thumbs down if you don't. Either way, Josh and I would love to hear from you in the comments section. We will definitely get back to you because we want to talk about this comic book because this is really exciting. And I got to get right to the main event, just to the big thing that we're, we're talking about here. And it is... This this revelation in this comic book seven uh, the Flash seven sixty one this is Joshua Williamson as the writer uh, Howard Porter is the artist Eobard Thawne and and Barry Allen are going at it and finally we get this big revelation from Reverse Flash that he is not only did he go back and and kill his mother uh, he's been doing all sorts of things to ruin Barry Fla uh, Allen's life. So he could he can ruin every all that he stood for. He actually created Zoom. He created uh, Godspeed, and he also went back and it turns out he could operate on a, like a certain frequency and he could go undetected and hit certain things at Flash family members. And it, and Williamson basically retroactively explains a lot of these weird characterizations of things that doesn't didn't make sense. The one we're going to talk about first is right here in the bottom right hand corner. And that is Wally West at Sanctuary, and he was the one that suggested to him and implanted in his mind subconsciously that no one will ever believe this was an accident. You need to hide what happened and explain why Wally West went totally out of character and decided to, to hide the mass uh, you know, deaths that he was, uh, per he was uh, responsible for in Heroes in Crisis by Tom King. I couldn't be more excited. I think this is very good writing, and it, it's and it cleans up a lot of the mess that, that's that been in, in some of the DC comics. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Williamson's Flash run, for the most part, minus the, the Force Quest storyline that you were talking about, has been really good. And uh, uh, I, I'm not current with the title, but I have read this issue. And, oh, wow. Like, and th there's some threads in this that I'm seeing that I kind of have to go back and look through some of the older issues. But... I think he's pulling on some threads he planted all along in the run that at the time when you read them, you didn't think they were much, but now it looks like, oh, wow, he, he was actually planting seeds for this all along. But yeah, he definitely went back and retconned Heroes in Crisis. And, uh, you know, um, Flash Forward did a pretty good job at, you know, wiping away a lot of the muck from Wally's kind character. Rehabilitating the character. Let him yeah. redeem himself as he went out there to get... You know, to, to find his children, redeem his soul, and kind of save all these worlds, you know, within the dark multiverse. But this is something that needed to happen as well. Yeah, this is like the final really nice spit shine that just cleaned it all up, gave it that nice gleam of like, no, you know, Wally, Wally was uh, under apparently Reverse Flash's influence, which we'll probably talk about kind of the more plot stuff of this later on in the video. But yeah, I'm really liking this. Like, this is. Uh, this is the cherry on top of things. This puts Wally West right back up there on like his gleaming pedestal of being a hero. Um, so this is great. I, I love every second of this. And there's a lot here. Like I said, it kind of explains that he created Zoom on purpose. He created uh, Godspeed on purpose. 
And and he was going to the future and going back to the Flash Museum and to see what he changed and what he needed to go back all to get to this moment so he could spring his final trap where it's him and the Legion of Zoom. And it turns out the Legion of Zoom is a bunch of uh, Flash villains, but none of them had speed powers. And that, that kind of plays into the story arc. But he cleans up a lot of stuff here. Like he explains why Kid Flash goes along with Damian Wayne's weird false imprisonment scheme in Teen Titans that was going on before. That never really made sense. That's kind of clears up uh, some stuff with the button, also the the start of Flash War. You know, he, he cleans a lot of stuff up here. Yeah, yeah. He It's, it's kind of like he went back over the last maybe uh, three, four years of DC and kind of some of the Flash family-related stories and just kind of finds these things where – you know, people might have scratched their heads a little bit or maybe, you know, another writer who didn't know this stuff so well wrote people out of character or something. And he just kind of, you know, retcons it all into into, you know, into the he gives things an explanation and he just kind of makes everything flow uh, real well. Because, you know, you and I have talked about how much we both like uh, Adam Glass's Teen Titans run. But, you know, that was definitely an out of character moment, you know, for for Wally West the second or Wally West Jr., whatever you want to call him, you know, to be going along with Damien's clearly psychotic and borderline criminal methods at times. Um, and I, There's the, no the, borderline to it. <laughs> exactly. They did not get due process. That was illegal. <laughs> um, but the, the panel uh, in the middle column, the last one down, where it shows Barry and Wally arguing, um, that, that kind of brings back to the Flash annual, the first one by Williamson, mm -hmm. where they kind of have this big Flash tiff. War. and Yeah, and it's setting up Flash War. And I'm like, you know, when I read that, I, I thought the issue was great. Howard, let me just comment on Howard Porter's artwork. Like, oh, man, this guy's amazing. Um, he, he's probably the best Flash artist out there, you know. Um, but there, there are kind of moments in that annual where I was like, huh, this seems kind of weird. Like, there's this odd tension between Barry and Wally, and I don't really know why. They're usually, you know, best friends and whatnot. But this goes back and explains that that Reverse Flash was an influence on that all along, and he was planting seeds to tear the whole Flash family apart the whole time. Oh, man, it's so good. I'm so happy with this. Yeah, he even excited. influenced Barry in the past when he turned his back on his family uh, you know, so it's a lot of cool stuff in here. I think uh, Josh Williamson did a great, great job within, you know, there's like two pages of this that explains it, but all around it is just action packed, jammed to the walls, like is just all action. It's like this, the enormous Flash family going against this Legion of Zoom in Central City, and they're about to take out the city that it's going to go down. It's, it's really cool. There's so many uh, awesome characters in here. Just from Flash lore, you know, allies, other F Speed Force users, and, and they're just going at it, you know, in in the middle of it. It's Barry Allen versus Reverse Flash the whole time. It's really exciting. I was, I haven't really read a DC comic like just that's this much fun in yep. in quite a while. Uh, you know, DC's kind of dour right now, but this was fun. There were so many callbacks. If you're a Flash fan. There's so many cool characters and, and, and things from the past that get kind of brought into this, and you're, you're going to love it. I was oh, shocked. Uh, I mean, look at that that page that you have up there now. The colors alone are just – you've got mm -hmm. blue, green, red, yellow, purples, pinks. It just pops. It, it's so bright and, you know, like amazing. I love the fact that you've got Jay Garrick in there. Uh, you've got Max Mercury, Jesse Quick, Bloodwork. Grodd, all, all these different characters from so many different points in the Flash's history. You know, you've got uh, Post Crisis up there. You know, it, it's uh, oh wow, yeah, like it's just amazing. You have uh, Bart Allen, not written by Bendis, which is great. Yes, he's, my favorite part. <laughs> he's one of my favorite DC characters, and it just sucks that he's in Young Justice. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 in there as Impulse. Oh man, it just that page is just. I don't know how someone creates something like that. Like, how do you draw that? It's just amazing. And the the crazy part is, so during this story, all of a sudden, Max Mercury he has like an epiphany, and he said he needs to meditate. So he goes down. And he's doing this meditation while this all this action's going on around him, and he he like um, I don't know. He somehow contacts other uh, members of the Flash family and all. Even more characters show up. I was I was blown away. You know, even got that. Uh, I think she was the lady that was the uh, what was it the not the speed force. She was like the strength force user that was kind of lame. But we got all these great characters from the past that show up to the party and really um, 
they just all go go down. You just it's just like a, a I don't want to call it a flash orgy, but it's almost a flash family orgy. Just all these characters on the page as they're all battling it out and destroying the the Legion of Zoom. As Barry and, and Eobard Thon are, are going at it, it's just it's excellent. So there's two characters on that page that make me really happy to see. The first one is uh, the uh, Earth 2 comic version of, uh, I believe, Jay Garrick there with like his weird Speed Force visor helmet on. And yeah, it looks also... like uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but much cooler. Um, and then there's, <laughs> you've got, uh, the, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the Mercury version of the Flash from Kingdom Come in there as well. Uh, where he had Jay Garrick's uh, helmet on, but he was basically a god of speed at that point. So that that's like, oh man, you can tell Josh Williamson knows his DC. It's kind of like when Joel Johns writes something big. You just see all his DC lore from so many years come to life on a page. It just gets you all excited. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm fired up after reading this. This is great. Oh yeah, B2 is like, uh, like I said, I, I jumped off. I was really enjoying Flash right up into Flash uh, or Force Quest. I was, I was, trying to figure out the right time to jump back in. Apparently I missed the boat because this is the third issue of this story, but it's to told so well. I knew exactly what was going on. Yes, I'm, I know I'm miss missing a detail here and there, but he catches you right up and you're just right in the action. And I'm not going, where did this at? I'm just, I was so into it because it was so much fun. It was so cool. The art is amazing. Uh, like uh, Howard Porter just, he's a great Flash artist and this is, it feels like him and Williamson. This is like their like love letter to Flash fans. Where you get to see all these characters finally get together and, and, and battle it out and, and save the day. Yep. And so while this is going on, like we said, uh, Barry and and uh, Thawne are going on, it, and he's confused because these characters have shown up. He has not destroyed Barry Allen like he knows in the future that's going to happen. So something has changed. So he jumps into the Speed Force. To, to go back to the future and figure out what went wrong so he can come back and destroy Barry Allen's life again. But Barry Allen has had enough. He follows him into the Speed Force, and when these characters finally overcome the Legion of Zoom and send them back to where they're gone, something happens. It appears that both Barry Allen and Eobard Thawne are actually stuck in the Speed Force, and it says... This was the last time Barry Allen and Eobard Thawne ever raced. And you got Barry Allen behind him. He's a, You could see he's had enough. I'm going to kill you, Thawne. Great picture. Great way to end a comic book. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, his whole run has kind of been building to this. Um, the Reverse Flash has been involved in three, kind of a beginning, a middle, and an end of Williamson's run. And uh, it's kind of to the point where everything he's done to Barry – it would be the point where Barry would be pushed over to the edge. So this is, this is like the, like, it's just such a love letter to any, to all Flash fans and to whoever's kind of kept up with Williamson's run, you know, the entire time. Um, like you said, the, the Force Quest stuff wasn't very good, uh, but I, I, I attribute that to some other factors. I don't think that's completely Williamson's fault, but right after that, it kind of picked back up. It, Flash year one was great. Um, the year the villain stuff like with uh commander cold and stuff that was pretty good but this is just kind of bringing his story with thawne that started around like uh issue 20 25 ish of williamson's run it's bringing it all full circle and it's just like oh man even if this ends with barry being trapped into speed force again for like a certain amount of time I'm cool with it because the story is just the story has been written well enough to the point where if that's the end then he got to it and he's earned it. Um, and we yeah. don't know with with Wally West being polished up, maybe he's set up being set up to replace Barry. Who knows? We have Wally West is definitely he's uh, he's well on his way to being fully redeemed within De Death Metal. I was supposed to be reviewing Dark Knight's Death Metal Trinity Crisis here today, but I, I got kind of tipped off for this. I went and read it. I was like, nah, that, I'm putting that one off to tomorrow. This is. This is the most exciting comic I've read at DC in quite a while. Obviously, I still think, you know, um, Three Jokers is a better comic book. But this is more exciting, especially within the ongoing continuity and stuff. It's been a while since DC really put out a comic that felt just this cool. And so I, I definitely had to hit it today. And, you know, kudos to Joshua Williamson. He's obviously, he's had a great run. Obviously, he started off the DC Rebirth era 
on Flash. I believe he's the final writer that's still on the original title. Uh, he's done a great job. I, I did, you know, like I said, I, I dropped off during uh, Force Quest. I was waiting to kind of get back in. I was definitely turned off by uh, Year of the Villain. I, I ended up dropping several ongoing titles because I was just tired of dealing with all that crap. But I'm I'm glad I came back for this. I am going to go back and, and read the first two issues of the story arc, and uh, I'm going to be there with Joshua Williams until the end. Obviously, his run on Flash is is um, is coming to an end. Uh, unfortunately, hopefully, you know, I, I have a feeling. We know that he's doing like a short arc that ties into Death Metal with um, with the Justice League. I I just have a feeling he's going to be like the next Green Lantern writer. He's going to get another, uh, you know, maybe not. A list character, but you know, B, C list kind of character. What that he can do, what he's done with Flash, and and uh, I think he's done such a good job. And you know, like I said, kudos to him and Howard Porter. This this is a great comic book. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the series too. You know, like you said, Williamson was the only writer left on the series. You know, that was also on at the start of Rebirth. He has just been also paired with teams of artists there hasn't been one flash book that has let me down in terms of quality of art. You've had, um, uh, Oh man, Decaminico or something was his name. I butchered that. You can mm -hmm. go find it, but he was great. Then you had Porter switching off with uh, Christian deuce and stuff like, uh, Scott Rafa Sandoval came over after how yep. Jordan, the green Lantern Corps ended up. Yeah. Sandoval was on it. Scott Collins came back for a while who had worked with Jolf Johns on the flash you know during his run like 10 15 years ago it, it just so he yeah he he's had an all-star team of artists with him on his entire run but porter kind of stands head and shoulders above the rest is like this guy knows how to draw the flash i mean just look at that picture like i love it when they loop the lightning around all the flash like if you look at thawne he's just got lightning like formed all around him it's like running everywhere it just looks intense it draws you into it the colors pop just so good like man that's it's just amazing yeah i'm glad you know he's had such a, a long run obviously he, he's he's still going on with the title but williamson deserves a lot of credit uh to go on for with this long he's had some very high moments and it feels like he is going to be uh leaving flash on a very high note and i'm glad because I, I do honestly believe in that, with the annals of history, when we go back in ten years, when we start looking back at you know the best runs, and when I say runs, I'm not talking about a story here and there. I'm talking about a sustained run. This will be one of the the three or four best flash runs, you know, in the history of the company. Oh yeah, I firmly I mean, believe that. You know, probably you could probably rank Joff Johns as Flash up there as you know close to number one. He's definitely in there. But th this is this is probably like a Flash run that if I would ever say you know ten fifteen years from now, man, I want to go back and read some Flash. This would probably be the the run that I would pick to go back to. I just I really hope DC gives him the omnibus treatment. You know, come in a year or two down the line, let let me get two uh, let me get two omnibus books for Williamson's Flash run. I'd be very happy with that. Hey, he deserves it. That's for sure. Yeah. So if you're looking for a great comic, if you haven't been reading Flash, go back and grab 759, 760, and then this one, 761. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed because it's been very exciting. This is like, this is nearly a five star book. You know, the only reason it's not is because it, it is a bit of a cop out to say Evar Thawne and uh, you know, was evil and, and went and did everything. But I like the way it was executed. It's not perfect. But it's done very well. It's, this is like a four and a half star comic. This is really close to being, you know, as as good as it gets. I I agree, and I, I I it is a bit of a cop out, but it's a very cool one because it just kind of you know it introduces something new that you know we didn't know about, and it kind of makes Barry, you know, it kind of puts Barry back, you know, a step or two to say like, oh, you know, you you never even bothered to learn about my source of powers. I've had this all along. You didn't. Even, you didn't even know it. You know. I. I, mm -hmm. I kind of like a story like that. It is a cop out in a way, but I think it's just executed so well hey, that you sometimes know. you need to clean things up. And I, like mm -hmm. I said, it's done it very well. Like I said, you know, you had a, you know, it's the Flash. There's always tra time travel, and there's they're always changing. You know, uh, the events that happen. So it, it works within the the series. And like I said, it's great. If you want a fun comic, this is one for you. I think that's going to wrap it us up for today, Josh. Great news. Basically, uh, DC Comics has retconned the awfulness that was Heroes in Crisis and the character assassination, at least the best that they can. Joshua Williamson, I'm glad he was the one to do it, along with Scott Lobdell. 
uh, in Brett Booth in, in the pages of Flash Forward. The character deserved it. I'm very happy that it happened, and um, I can't wait. I'm I'm definitely on. I'm riding out Flash until Williamson's gone. So this is very exciting. Yeah, for sure.